one of the key elements specifically when you're also new to drawing to get really good at it is to calm down that means whenever you start your first drawing um, take five to ten minutes and practice some warm-up exercises lines circles squares etc that actually has two main reasons the first one is mentally maybe you're distracted uh, maybe you're thinking about a problem and a product you need to solve or something or you're otherwise somewhat distracted with whatever is going on in your day so that's not good you want to empty your brain and really be able to nicely focus on on the drawing the second aspect is everything about product sketching specifically when you're afraid of not being good at it when you're just learning it it's all about memorizing how to draw certain lines certain arcs circles etc efficiently and being able to in a controlled manner to reproduce them so it's all about mumble, uh, memory muscle and the more you do that the better you get at it so this warm-up exercise helps you really in, in two ways so either on a digital tablet um, or with paper and pen before you actually start drawing this one thing that's really important a lot of people actually overlook it the way how you sit is really the way how you draw if your legs are crossed or if for example you're putting all your weight on your left arm and you sketch with your right arm if your shoulders are not uh, in balance and, and loose I can see that inside the lines how somebody can sit so what you want really to make sure is you sit nice comfortable your drawing hand loosely holds the pen don't clamp it it's not going to run away and your your wrist is kind of stiff you basically move your lower arm and that's your your drawing tool and it's also because your lower arm is connected to your upper arm and that connected to your shoulder why it's so important that your shoulder is nice uh, nice and relaxed okay so that was like preparation how to sit right then you can take a sheet of paper uh, here in my case because I do the screen recording I'm going to use sketchbook pro I here have a sheet of paper I use a pen and then you start drawing maybe from one side to the other side your lines try to draw really along the long side because short lines the same like small drawings are more or less pointless they don't really help you much and let's do this a little bit more can you see maybe how I started it's kind of shaky not really very good so there I can see like where maybe I have some irregularities and the main reason for this exercise is so think about this as like a real page later I can rotate it and then actually kind of look look up this way along my lines to see if maybe there is somewhere a certain um, position where I start arcing so the because the, the difficulty of drawing actually lines straight lines is the following so if I rest my lower arm on my page and I just move my hand so I'm rotating my wrist of course I'm drawing a nice arc so if I keep my my wrist stiff and I'm also only using my lower arm and that one is rotating also there I'm rotating uh, I'm drawing actually an arc by the way do you see that my arm arc is actually better than my wrist arc that's the reason why you should not try to draw curves out of your wrist so the problem is that because we have bones connected to joints it's kind of like hinges it's more like a circular motion and we always want to naturally draw something like this but you should imagine maybe something like this to be able to draw something like this so when you do when you do those line exercises pay attention to if maybe is there at one point maybe a position where you do something like this and of course I'm superimposing this right now so I know here at this point at the end I have to go up this way to be able then to draw a straight line or if maybe I start incorrectly just then try to correct that okay 
the next thing that's really important is also, and I mentioned the word um, memory muscle, how you draw a line, in what direction. You can draw this way, I can draw this way, I can draw this way, or this way. So that's all possible, but the question is how good are they all going to be? So let's try out a small exercise. I'm going to draw lines towards my body. So just move it down towards me. Okay, good. Now I'm going to move my arm left and right. Okay, and now actually from the lower left to the upper right, I'm going to draw lines at a diagonal. So why is this one actually important to, to look at? Well, the thing is, in my last example, I drew from my body away. So I push my arm into nothing that's kind of like resisting, that's just air. If I move my hand towards me, actually my my drawing arm will, will slide along my torso. could start shaking my hand, not really good. If I draw from the left to the right, yeah, that's okay, but my arm is still kind of like connected more to my body and actually if I draw at an angle, pay attention to how you're rotating your arm, like left and right, your right arm actually is next to your torso. If you draw at an angle, you you push, you pull your elbow away from your body. So that opens up more like freedom of motion. And if we actually rotate maybe our view, you can see actually that the left and right is kind of terrible, it's really arcing. The um, up down are somewhat okay, but there's a lot of noise in between in them. And the one which are diagonal, they're actually the best. So that actually brings up the next point. The nasty cheating of flipping the page. So you have two ways. Um, you you take uh, like tape and glue down the page, and then when you have to draw lines in two different directions, you walk around your table. Of course, that's a joke. So when I have to draw this way, I don't have to rotate my page. That's fine. But if, for example, I have to go this way, then in real life or digitally. I simply rotate my document because then again I do my lower left to my upper right arm motion. If maybe I have to go from here to there, then I for example try to rotate it so I get correctly kind of like that motion I need and zoop, push it in. Of course, when you work with pen and paper, flipping the page is much faster and uh, easier than digitally because you all the time I have to use the rotate command. I could also rotate actually my tablet, um, but the Cintiq tablet I have has a pretty long cable, which I really, I'm not really happy about it. At that time, there was no other way to do that. Today, Cintiq came out with uh, a new tablet, the Companion, which has no cable anymore. That's actually pretty awesome. And of course, then I rather, instead of flipping the, the page, I would just rotate my tablet. So maybe at this point, let's take a look at the next section, how to draw good quality lines. So let's say you're new to drawing and you really like control and you're afraid of giving up control and you do this. So I see this point and I start drawing and really concentrate on drawing a straight line, really pushing a lot of pressure on my pen. Oh, there, I stop, perfect. And uh, not really. First problem, I have those dots, they're terrible. And because I draw really slowly, I apply automatically more pressure probably on my pen, specifically when you're in a digital tablet, and the line gets really shaky. So that's not good. Mer 
let's try to do the opposite. I draw really fast. So zip and zip and zip and zip and zip there. Okay, nah, that's not really much better because I drew so fast I was giving up control. I can't control my, my arm motion as good when drawing so fast. So the trick is basically trying to find a speed where you feel comfortable with drawing nice and fast, controlling your lines, and then putting a good stroke down. And I still have always a small Alex C actually, so my ends actually they have to go up a little bit. Okay, so that's basically about the speed. Don't draw too slow, it's not going to work. Don't draw too fast, it's not going to work as well. You need to find kind of like the speed you are comfortable where you kind of like have a nice balance between control and fluid. Because the thing is, the faster you dr you draw, the less shakiness you have in your hand. So speed will iron out the problem of shakiness and drawing a little bit slower will iron out the problem of not being able to control your lines. This actually leads then to the next part. So maybe, uh, let's see, let's go to maybe, now oh, we can do this one. So you never start, draw and stop because again, you have those really annoying start and stop dots. That's not really what you want. So essentially what you want, let's say from here to here, I would like to draw a line. I start actually moving from here to till there, my arm, and only in this area in between, I start drawing. So I go basically over it. Memory muscle again, you see, I try to imagine where I'm going to put my line down. And then when I go over these two lines, then I touch the paper on my display. And once I leave this line, I still move my hand, but I remove my pen from the tablet. So that was too early, for example, like this. So why is this, for example, important? Well, first, you don't have the problem with those starting dots. And the next thing is, For example, something like there. This is actually very easy to to do with paper and uh, like a very cheap um, ball pen. You start seeing that the starts and ends of your lines feather out nicely. It's a little bit more difficult to do actually digitally. But that line quality, for example, in my opinion, is much more superior. than something that is brutally the same because this looks kind of dead. Can be okay, but it just kind of looks kind of like technical, not very natural or fluid. And those, uh, in German we call it ductus, like the quality of your line has more character, it's more alive. So ghosting here again is really important. Move your arm over from where to where you want to draw. And while you're still moving your uh, hand, Put down your pen on the paper, draw, lift your pen up from the paper, and continue the motion, and then stop. It's kind of like archery. They don't put the arrow into the bow, aim and shoot. It's kind of like a motion. Everybody who practice archery knows what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's take a look at circles and ellipses, two of their hardest things to draw ever because you immediately see if something um, is wacky or not balanced. Also as a warning or kind of like a release up front, drawing ellipses and circles is really extremely hard. I do not know many who are really perfect at it, but the more you practice it, the more you warm up, uh, and the more you do it, actually, you get good at them. But there are also certain ways how you can try to make sure to get um, to, to an acceptable level of ellipses. And also, what you sketch by hand uh, only needs to be somewhat accurate to a certain level because when you make then a presentation sketch, then I would use an ellipse template to, to correct that anyway. So to draw ellipses. 
Again, what you do not want to do is you start and try to do this. Because again, it's really, really shaky. So I ghost. You can, if you want, maybe put down some points, kind of like this is a reference. And then you move your, your, your ghost over it. Try to see the shape. And then at one point, zip, you put it on. And take a look at how smooth and nice that curve is. It's, I'm actually impressed, that one is good. Of course, you will not perfectly hit those markers. So that's a given. Let's maybe try to make a circle. Yeah, maybe at the beginning, if you want to start um, a circle, maybe make yourself a plus. So you kind of like see how you have to move. And again, there you see the more you make motions and you ghost, the better the result will be. So maybe we can try to practice an ellipse kind of like really flat. They're actually really hard. I always tend to belly down that lower part. Bigger ellipse is easier. Oh, that one is good as well. Also here, one thing, Try this one out at one point. Try to make it bigger and bigger. And you will see everything that's kind of drawn out of your wrist. Motion is crap. Everything you start drawing out of your arm motion will look better. So another reason why also, if you think you're afraid of drawing and messing it up and you draw small because then you might not. Yes, actually, you I will see flaws in your small drawing faster because it's easier to mess up than when you draw big. Um, there's really this psychological fear of drawing big, but trust me, if you draw bigger, your stuff will look better because you can easier hide inaccuracies. And also your, your motion will be better, so your lines will be better. And again, another reason why your drawing will look better. Another re way, for example, to make ellipses is maybe also draw a line and then think, for example, this is a Coke bottle. Try to maybe see, can you hit maybe the minor and major axis? We'll go into those parts later, a little bit more detail. So different, different directions. And I'm really quick right now. I'm not rotating my page. Okay. So that, for example, for basic ellipses. Now, everything here really, again, is about developing memory muscle. No, uh, muscle memory. So, for example, a good exercise is you start with a small squirrel. Bigger, and you go down, and you get smaller. So you see, there's actually kind of like a small ball, which we created out of wire. So the idea is that maybe you you create ellipses that you can compact inside a nice circle. Another approach would be, for example, you start like a really big circle and you get smaller. And you see I'm trying to hit everything at the center and then you get bigger again. And the trick here is to try to have everything hitting those lines. And you see the smaller my, or the flatter my ellipses get, the shorter actually they get. So that's not good. So maybe let's try this one. I'm going to make myself two lines. I'm rotating actually my tablet right now. And I start really big. Now I can see those lines actually as a small helper. And then I go over and I'll make really big lines. Okay, and you see at one point when I got too big, it started to look like a potato. Okay, so that's pretty much everything about some of the quick ways how to uh, create um, or how to warm up. Um, these exercises aren't really very complicated, but I promise you the more you do it, the better really all your sh uh, shapes will be. And I found after years of teaching drawing, one thing is really true. Uh, learning how to sketch is like learning how to ride a bike. Uh, it's not 
a gift, you're not artistic, if you can draw lines or circles, you're simply skilled, you memorized how to do it. And practice is simply really key, focus and practice. And if you do that through repetition, at one point you will, and that is guaranteed, you will get good at sketching. And to bring this to an end, we can actually practice drawing squares a little bit. So even here you see the first line I didn't ghost, so it's pretty crappy. My next lines I drew uh, more and more ghosted, so the lines got better. Take a page and just different sizes, for example, to draw lines. And it, at the beginning, really, what you have to establish is trying to get a feeling for what actually looks like a proportional square. For example, this does not. Um, maybe, maybe like this. That's a little bit better. If you take this page, don't. Um, say, yay, <laughs> I fill this page with many squares. Uh, this type of exercise, what I'm doing here right now, out of my wrist in a small scale is completely useless, so delete. Really take a page and plaster it with nice and big lines. If you want to be creative, make a transition of something, you can maybe make them even smaller and then step by step, for example, they get bigger. There are many ways how, for example, you can be creative with it if you need to. But the main idea is really that you use this exercise as a means to sharpen your eyes so you get a feeling for what really is a proportional square and what, for example, is not. Because the square is really one of your most important building blocks. For example, we could say this is one inch and one inch or one meter by one meter, specifically when we go into perspective drawing. And that's, for example, how you block elements or objects into cubes. So you have some sort of control over the width and the depth and the height of a product when you sketch it. And if your uh, sensibility for squares is not correct, then actually your sketch can easily tank and will look distorted or not to scale. And this basically now concluded everything for what to do as a warm-up exercise.